I've been using Cloud Code a lot lately. It's really surpassed Cursor for me for all my AI coding needs. Hey, my name is Ben. In this video, I'm gonna show you the top three productivity tips that I've learned from my hundreds of hours of using Cloud Code. Let's go. This first tip addresses something that really can kill your flow in Cloud Code. So we do something simple in a project, especially in the first time we say start a dev server. It's gonna go and it's gonna ask us for permission to actually run the command or edit the code, whatever the case may be. And then it gives you three options. You can either just proceed with it, you can proceed with it and then don't ask again for that particular command. And then third, you can just say, no, I don't wanna do it differently. But as I was using Cloud Code more and more, I found myself always just picking two, no matter what. I find with Cloud Code, it doesn't really try to do anything crazy ever. So there's not really any reason to always ask this question. I'll show you a different way to open Cloud Code so you don't have to always approve all those permissions. To bypass permissions, what you have to do is launch Cloud normally, but then add a flag, dash, dash, dangerously skip permissions. And now when you open it up, we're gonna see a message here saying bypassing permissions. And now if we ask to start the dev server, it's just gonna do it. It's not gonna ask for permission or not gonna give us those options anymore. Obviously this does introduce a bit more risk because now Claude can do anything on your system. So there are some hooks you can add in that gives you some protection. You could add in a hook that prevents it from going outside the scope of your project folder. You could also add a hook that stops it from removing files. But to be honest, I don't find those are used actually very much at all. Because like I said, Claude doesn't do any crazy changes from my personal experience. Always putting in that flag every time can be a bit annoying. There's a shortcut you can use so you can create an alias on your system. That's what I did. So you can create an alias that maps the, just the word Claude to Claude with that dangerously skip permissions flag. So I'll put that in the description of the video if you want to use that. But once that's in place, now I can just open Claude like normal. Now it's going to bypass permissions by default. So do your own research to make sure this is a good fit for you to bypass permissions. But for me, it's given me a productivity boost because it allows Claude code to work more in agent mode. If you're in cursor and you're in your project, if you just do the init command, what it does is builds you a Claude.md file. So a markdown file. And the unique thing about it though, is that every time Claude loads, it loads this Claude.md file in there. And there I created it. And this file has the essential development commands, architecture overview, and key components. That's great. And it's, it's useful. But this next productivity hack will make it even better. So if we look here at what it created, it's done a really good job of creating this file. But what I find is adding a section for shortcuts really helps and really saves a lot of time. I'm gonna add command shortcuts here. The ones I'm gonna use for this example are around GitHub. So creating feature branches in GitHub, doing pull requests, pushing your code to GitHub. Cloud code is a bit weak on restore points and backups. So this is actually, these commands are a real lifesaver. So if you look at the first one, I just give it a short, like two or three letter acronym for the command I want. And then I remember all the commands because I use them all the time. So for example, NB here will be creates a new branch for feature development. So it creates a feature branch. Something like PPR publishes the PR, the pull request, and creates good commit messages. So you can do this for whatever kind of commands you want in your application that you use all the time. It's gonna save you a lot of time in Cloud Code. So let's look at an example. So now in Cloud Code, I can just use those shortcuts. So now I'm gonna say NB for new branch, and I just say what the branch is gonna be about. So this is gonna be create a branch to detect duplicate locations. Now it's gonna know what that command means. It's gonna create the branch. It's gonna name it nicely for me. So say detect duplicate locations. Now that branch is all ready for me to go. And all I have to do to get this hooked up, by the way, is I just installed GitHub Desktop, linked it to my GitHub account, and that gave Cloud Code full access to my GitHub account so it can create all these feature branches, et cetera. Now that's created, I can just do my coding as usual. I'm gonna say add a warning if a location has the same address and zip code as one already in the system. And the Cloud Code will go out as normal, do its thing. But now I have that feature branch created so I can actually just commit the changes it's doing. So now if it's done coding, I can just commit those changes to that branch right inside Cloud Code. And it's really nice because it kind of makes up for some of those lacking restore point features in Cloud Code. It allows me to quickly back up files to GitHub, keep a good version track, and then I'll show you in a second, it does really good documentation. We can also use our create pull request command here. And that's now it's gonna go out to GitHub. And again, it's gonna create a pull request. There is actually a GitHub app built for Cloud Code. So you can say install GitHub app here. And that's probably the recommended way to do it. So you definitely try that out. But for my experience, using the, the ClaudeMD file and just putting in those custom commands works really well for me and it's really enhanced my productivity. And this is just one example of using GitHub, but there's, I'm sure, all kinds of things you can think of to add to the ClaudeMD file as shortcuts. 
And if we look at the pull request it actually created in GitHub, it did a really nice job of documenting it. It has a really nice summary, key features, even the test plan in here. And it's very useful documentation. This is one thing I'm seeing in the industry right now is everyone's at least starting with using AI for documentation. It is a really good first use case and Cloud Code does it really well. This next productivity tip is a bit of a two for one. So first it's about how your screen's laid out for maximum productivity. In this case, I wanna see everything I can. What I suggest is you have a vertical monitor. So you see this on the left here. This would be your code. So your cursor or your Visual Studio code, whatever you're using. That would be a dedicated monitor that's vertical. Then your second monitor could be more horizontal. And you could have on that one, you could have Claude code in a separate terminal. You could also have the application you're building. This way you can just look at the application. It's gonna do a hot refresh when you do changes and just do commands in cloud code. Everything just right there, right in front of you. And then you can see the code being updated in real time as you go. And by the way, when you do have the second monitor set up with a separate terminal window, you can actually connect it to your IDE. So you just do a slash IDE command. And it's gonna give you a list of the IDEs you have installed and you have this configured in. So now I can just say cursor and now it's linked up. So that just ties everything together between your two monitors. And now I have all my windows positions so everything's in front of me. So I can do rapid development using Claude Code's queuing methods. If you're used to cursor like I was, you kind of get used to, you put in your prompt and you wait for it to finish and then you put in your next one. But Claude Code's actually way better for this and it's got a really powerful queuing feature. So check this out. I just put in the prompt add sort for website column, but while it's actually cooking away and doing that, if I put in another command, like add icon to store locations and I hit enter, so now you see it's actually been queued here and Claude's actually gonna go through all these queued messages and do them, not necessarily in the order you present them, but it's gonna kind of combine them and do a really intelligent way of doing all the changes for you kind of together. So what I find myself doing is like, now that I have everything on my screen, I can see the application and see the changes coming in real time. I just keep putting in things I want changed and just not worrying about the order or anything. Just keep putting them in there, queuing them up. So Claude Code just does it for me. And then I keep iterating in real time. So just that little bit of time while I was talking, it took those two queued messages and did both the changes. I added sort into my website column and added this nice little icon for my store locations. So when you're using Claude Code, make sure you invest the time to get your system set up how you want it with the windows and screens all how you want it. Also make constant use of the queuing feature is really powerful. Just blast away with all your changes and let Claude Code manage it and do them all for you. I think we're in a period of time right now where if you really understand how to use Claude Code effectively, you really have an unfair advantage. I'm gonna do more videos on Claude Code coming up, everything from tips and tricks like this one to actual application builds. If that's interesting to you, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I hope you're having an amazing day. I'll talk to you in the next one.